So Galaxy S22 Ultra, Galaxy S23 Ultra. Chances are you already know these are the two most alike Samsung flagships pretty much ever. Seeing these at a distance and even using them, you've really got to know where to look to tell one from the other. Which makes this one of the more unusual comparisons we've done so far. Obviously, few people will be upgrading directly from an S22 to an S23, though if you're in Europe, there might be one big reason that you possibly want to consider that. But for everyone else, maybe you're tempted between the very latest Samsung flagship and a cut price deal potentially on last year's version. So let's get into the differences between these two and if the almost identical exteriors belie more meaningful upgrades on the inside. I'm Alex Doby, this is XDA TV, sponsored today by UPDF, the all-in-one PDF editor across Windows, Mac OS, iOS, and Android. More on them later, let's get into it. So for two devices that look so alike, let's start with the few subtle design cues that actually are different. The biggest one I notice in day-to-day -day use is the sidewalls. See, the screen of the S23 Ultra is ever so slightly less curved than the S22, to accommodate a flatter horizontal frame that's a bit easier to hold onto. I don't find the S22 Ultra super slippery, but it's definitely something that I notice and prefer about the S23. Otherwise, from the outside, you're looking at color differences, though Samsung's chosen hues for both of these are still pretty conservative, not a lot of vibrance to be found around either of these devices. And you can see a few minor details around the cameras, like slightly more prominent lens frames on the S23. There were some claims before it launched that the S23 Ultra would have a slightly narrower chin area down below. Honestly, if that is the case, it's not a difference you're going to see without the assistance of a microscope. Seriously, the borders here are practically identical. It's a similar deal with the screens themselves. They share the same peak brightness level of 1750 nits and both look fantastic even under bright daylight. So there you have it. These are both fairly blocky, chunky handsets, taking after Samsung's Galaxy Note design language. The S23 feels a bit more squared off with its flatter sidewalls, a bit less comfortable, but arguably easier to hold onto. The most important difference between these two isn't one you'll see anywhere on the outside though. The Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 chip powering the S23 is the biggest generational upgrade we've seen from Qualcomm in years. Forget that this is a 4 Galaxy version of the chip that's faster on paper, say, than the regular version used by OnePlus and others. Just the efficiency gains alone make this chip a big deal compared to its predecessors. Whereas the S22 Ultra was okay in terms of battery life, in my experience, it wasn't a phone that achieved much beyond the bare minimum of that full, moderate day's use. On days with heavier use like trade shows, the difference was pretty stark. I used the S22 Ultra at IFA last year in Berlin, and the S23 Ultra at Mobile Congress back in February, and the difference in terms of battery anxiety was palpable. The S23 Ultra is just more dependable in terms of longevity, and that makes a big deal in everyday use of this phone. This, to me, is probably the biggest advantage the S23 has over its predecessor. We'll get into differences in camera quality later, and they are non-trivial, but being able to know you'll reliably get a full day, whatever you're doing, with around 7 hours of screen on time, and likely a second day with lighter use, is really a valuable upgrade. And it's something the S22 Ultra just can't guarantee. When it comes to charging, neither phone is at the head of the pack, but the S23 Ultra does at least reintroduce the 45 watt charging spec that's been in Samsung phones on and off for the past few years now, but which was oddly absent from the S22. That'll get you a full refill in just under half an hour, and of course you also have 15 watt wireless charging. The difference in performance and battery life though is more stark for me personally as someone who's had to use the Exynos version of last year's Samsung flagship. Samsung's Exynos SoCs were notorious for running hotter and getting worse battery life than the Snapdragon versions of these phones sold in the US and China. So it's great that this year, wherever you buy an S23 Ultra, you're getting the best possible processor. It also means for us Europeans, you're more likely getting a serious, tangible upgrade going from Exynos 2200 in an S22 Ultra to an S23 Ultra with the latest and greatest. Besides which, the S23 Ultra gets you an extra 128 gigs of base storage compared to the S22 and at faster UFS 4 speeds to boot. So software and features are pretty much identical across both devices. By now, the S22 Ultra has received its One UI 5.1 update, largely bringing it to feature parity with the S23 outside of just a few outliers. And the S23 Ultra has gotten its big April 2023 update, which improved camera quality and addressed a few other quality of life issues for the newer model. That only makes these fantastic two phones even better, with the most feature-rich smartphone experience you're likely to find. 
The S Pen is alive and well in both handsets, though don't get them mixed up because while the pen from the S22 will fit inside the S23, it won't work the other way around. Either way, the same set of stylus features is in both generations of Ultra, and the same applies to other marquee Samsung features like DeX, the desktop experience suite that lets you plug your phone into a monitor and keyboard. Same too goes for SmartThings, Modes and Routines, Bixby, and everything else you associate with being an exclusive Samsung feature. These work great whichever Galaxy you pick up. Check out our S23 Ultra review for more on the full loadout of features that is now in both of these phones. This video is sponsored by UPDF, the all-in-one PDF editor across Windows, Mac OS, iOS, and Android. Look, chances are you've dealt with your share of PDFs, and despite being universal, they can be kind of a hassle. UPDF is the one tool you need to do anything you might want to do to, around, or in the general vicinity of a PDF. With UPDF, you can read, edit, and annotate existing PDFs, export to other formats, and even recognize text in scanned PDFs thanks to the magic of optical character recognition. UPDF is a one-stop solution for anything PDF-related on pretty much any device you might happen to own – Mac, Windows, iOS, and of course Android. All functions are free to try without a license, but if you pick one up, then that one license gives you UPDF across all platforms with the same clean, delightful interface and fast processing speeds, regardless of which device you're using. It's more cost-effective than Adobe Acrobat, lower price, and you can buy a perpetual license so you don't need to be tied to a subscription. XDA TV viewers can get UPDF for 54% off. That license gets you the app itself across all platforms, 10 gigabytes of free cloud storage, and a JoySoft PDF password remover thrown in for free. Links in the description, and thanks to UPDF for sponsoring this video. With phones that are as similar as these, the cameras are another important point of differentiation. And while the ultra-wide and twin telephotos haven't changed on paper over the past year, there is a new 200 megapixel main camera in the newer Ultra that's been much hyped for its faster autofocus and potential to capture more fine detail than ever before. But that said, it's worth remembering that the sensor size itself has barely changed, going from one of 1.33 inches to one of 1.31 in the newer Ultra. That means in terms of the basic physics, you're just not capturing that much more light. So comparing the ultra-wide main and 3x cameras here, what struck me was how even with the similar sensor size in the main and identical hardware in the others, there was a difference in how these photos looked. Mainly this came down to colour balance and exposure. To my eye, the S23 Ultra's shots were often warmer and slightly more brightly exposed than the S22's, something I found applied to both the ultra-wide and the main, and to a limited extent the three times as well. Both look excellent, but when you put them side by side like this, in quite a few situations, I actually preferred the output of the older phone. Shots in the S22 Ultra had a more pleasing level of contrast to them, and in overcast situations the colour temperature was closer to what your eye actually sees. You can see the same effect in play in shots from the 3x telephoto here, though admittedly it is a little bit more subtle. And in situations like sunsets, there was definitely a bit of extra punch to shots taken by the S22 versus the S23. Note the warmer hues and extra saturation in the shot from the S22 here. But look, as I've said before, you can easily spend a few seconds in any photo editing app and reintroduce a bit of that extra punch to the S23 shot if that's the look you prefer. So yeah, while it doesn't bother me all that much that there are these subtle colour differences between the S22 and S23, it is worth noting. The other difference between these two main cameras, though less noticeable than the colours, is in fine detail. This is really nitpicky stuff, and you'll need to go pixel peeping at 100% crop level to actually see it, but in certain shots you do notice slightly more fine detail in pics from the S23 than the S22. See the pattern in the grid here or the lack of the slight chroma noise that you see here in the shot from the newer phone around the edges of the frame. So the bottom line for the ultra-wide main and 3 times is you'll get slightly differently balanced colours, and for the main in particular, benefit from a little bit of extra fine detail, which likely comes down to that extra 92 million pixels in the newer primary sensor. The Super Telephoto is another mini enigma. This 10x camera has been the strongest suit for Samsung ever since its introduction in the S21 Ultra, and the hardware behind it hasn't changed a lot since then, instead bringing performance gains through improved processing. This trend continues in the S23 Ultra, similar hardware but better processing, though in this instance I found myself preferring the colours from the S23 Ultra, and it was the S22's that sometimes lacked that extra bit of contrast. 
But the major difference between these two actually became apparent beyond 10 times. At around 20 times to 30 times, it's easy to see how the S23 does a better job cleaning up the image and retaining fine detail, even in relatively shaky conditions. So it's clear Samsung's getting better photos out of very similar hardware in its newer phone. That generational improvement continues, even though the hardware stays relatively unchanged. Video-wise, the biggest difference I've seen is in stabilization in footage from that main camera. That's likely thanks to the new phone's upgraded OIS module for that main sensor. Colors from the S23 Ultra are a little bit less contrasty than the S22, but the difference is very hard to spot. And again, there's an odd exception to that rule once you switch up to 10x zoom. In this mode, the newer phone produces more lifelike and vibrant colors than its predecessor. Overall, these are small nuanced differences, and for social media posting or even the occasional bit of extra B-roll for these videos, I'd be confident having either of these video cameras in my pocket. Finally, it's worth mentioning that the S23 Ultra, and in fact all flavors of S23, can boast 8K video recording at 30 frames per second. With the S22, you're limited to just 24. I still think 8K video on phones is overkill for the time being, and you're still limited to just the main sensor in 8K mode, but hey, at least you can now record at the correct frame rate of 30 frames per second. So it's time to pick a winner. I think if you have an S22 Ultra and you're looking at what you get out of an upgrade to its immediate successor, it's not a super compelling upgrade. The only exception there is maybe perhaps if you're using an Exynos model and you're really struggling with that battery life or performance. If you're a price conscious buyer, you can definitely score some pretty great deals on a refurbished S22 Ultra for way less than half the price of the newer phone. And especially if you're in a Snapdragon region where you get the better chip in that S22, that could be worth investigating. A lot of the design and core experience is so similar, and although subtle camera upgrades have been made, this is an iterative upgrade even in the area of photography. One of those new features in One UI 5.1 for the S22, for example, is the S23's astrophotography mode. And the S22 still has another three years of Android software updates ahead of it. But for me personally, if it was my money, I'd pick the S23 Ultra. That's partly because I'd be choosing between the Exynos S22 and the Snapdragon S23 and the efficiency benefits that, that new chip brings. Battery life is a big deal, and the lack of battery anxiety that you get with this and most other Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 phones just rounds off an already exceptional smartphone experience. It addresses the main pain point of last year's model, especially for folks in former Exynos countries. But that's just my opinion. Hit the comments, let me know which you'd pick in this matchup. Is the newer phone really worth the extra cash? And thanks again to UPDF for sponsoring this video. Links in the description to save 54% on the all-in-one PDF editor across Windows, Mac OS, iOS, and Android. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.